Behavioral interview questions come up in most job interviews these days. If you want to impress your interviewer and really stand out, follow along for my eight tips. I'll tell you six things you definitely should do in your next behavioral interview and two things that you certainly want to avoid. I'm Jen with The Career Force. We help smart, career-minded professionals stand out in today's job market. For all the latest career advice, subscribe to the channel and check back every week when we post new videos. Let's talk about what you should do first. My number one tip, do prepare like you would for any other interview. Behavioral questions are not gonna be the only questions you get during the interview. So prepare like you would for any other interview you'd expect. This means research the company, review your resume, prepare talking points about your different experiences, and make sure that you understand what the job involves. This will make sure you're well prepared to answer any question that comes up during the interview. Here's my second tip. Do understand the STAR model. The STAR model stands for situation, task, action, and result. And it's a great way to give the entire context when you answer a behavioral interview question. You can find out more about how to use this model by watching our video, Answering Behavioral Interview Questions. I'll link it below. Do be specific in your responses. So when you're asked a behavioral interview question, you're going to be asked something about a specific situation that took place. You don't wanna give just a generic answer. This isn't about your general experience. It's about a very specific situation. Now you get to pick the situation, but be prepared to give details about it. You wanna give enough context so the person that you're responding to feels like they understood what happened. And you also want to keep it brief enough that they're interested. So be thorough, be specific, and keep it relatively short. Think about one to two minutes for an answer. Similar to preparing specific examples, you wanna prepare a few standard examples. So I mentioned in the last tip that you get to pick what you talk about. So prepare a few talking points of things that are really likely to come up. For any job that you apply for, this means being able to talk about your strengths, weaknesses, successes, and failures. And then prepare additional examples depending on the job. Are you applying for a technical job that requires certain software? Prepare examples about how you've used that software. You don't wanna just say, I can code in Python. You wanna be able to say, I can code in Python and here's a specific project I did with it. It shows the interviewer that you really do understand how to use things. You're not just checking a box on a resume um, or a job application saying, yes, I meet the requirement without any proof behind it. So prepare a few standard examples so that you've got things prepared, ready to go when the questions come up. You can tailor each of your responses based on the specific question, but those standard maybe three to five situational topics that you prepare will make it much easier, spur of the moment in the interview, to respond coherently when you're asked a behavioral interview question. Do take your time and listen carefully. It's really common in interviews for people to think about what they wanna to say to the interviewer and not really listen to what the interviewer is asking them. This can leave the interviewer feeling a little uncertain about how well you pay attention to detail. So listen, don't be afraid to pause and think think through your response if you need to. And remember the STAR model, it'll help you work through your explanation, even if it's a little bit on the fly. You're not gonna be able to sit there for five minutes preparing your answer in between the question and responding. But if you think about the STAR model, you can start your response without actually knowing how it's gonna end. You just know that you have to start out by talking about the situation and then move on to the other steps. This will help you give a great answer and make sure that what you're answering is really what the interviewer is asking about. My last do is do practice. There's really just no substitute. You can write great responses in advance. You can prepare everything else um, possible before your interview. But if you don't take some time to actually practice saying it, you're not gonna feel that comfortable during the interview. So this could be the classic look in a mirror and talk to yourself, but it's even better if you record yourself or do it with someone else. And when you do it with someone else, they can usually give you feedback that you might not notice about yourself. So they might notice things where you stumble um, or you aren't clear if someone's not you, because a lot of the situations you've been in, you may be likely to explain uh, with an inherent assumption 
important that someone knows more about what happened than what they really do. So definitely get in some practice. It will make sure that you really excel when you're answering these questions during the interview. Now that we've talked about a few things that you should do, let's talk about two things that you definitely should avoid doing when answering behavioral interview questions. My first, don't. Don't use old examples. Now, there's going to be times when the only example you have is an old example, but try to keep them as recent as possible. Think within the last one to two years. The reason you don't want to use older examples is because they don't show that you can use that skill in current context. Um, so if you used a skill or you use a skill in your everyday job and you have an example from 10 years ago or five years ago versus last month, use the one from last month. It shows that this is still a current skill you're employing and when you get that new job, you're going to be able to use that skill and execute it well in your new role. Here's my second don't. Don't make up examples that didn't happen. Usually it's pretty obvious to the interviewer when you're doing this. So you'll get a lot more general. Um, you may answer in conflicting ways about the situation. A lot of people feel pressure to come up with some answer to the question that shows that they've done something even if they haven't because they feel like saying that they haven't is going to say, don't hire me, I don't have this experience, but that's not really the case. If you're wondering how you should answer questions when you don't have a specific example because you don't have that experience, check out what is a behavioral interview. In that video, I talk more about what you can do to address your answer in a way that makes you stand out as a strong candidate but doesn't involve lying to the interviewer. I'll link that below. I'm curious if you've used any of these tactics in your previous behavioral interviews. Let me know in the comments below. If not, I hope you feel more prepared for your next behavioral interview. And even if you have used the tips, it never hurts to have a refresher on how to answer things in a really good way that makes you stand out. There's so much competition for jobs and having a little edge by being able to talk articulately about your experience really can give you a leg up over the competition. Thanks so much for watching. Check back next week when we talk more about how to advance your career.